What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and this is Crystal's Copia where we live a life of abundance and it is 2020 and it's almost the end of February. So we're just about two months into our 2020 goals. So I want to talk to you guys about 10 healthy habits that I'm implementing in 2020 that I'm actually sticking with and that have been easy to incorporate into my daily life. So if you guys would like to see 10 easy and relatable habits that you can start right now to help reach your goals in 2020, then just keep watching. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know the type of content that you like. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video with me again. That being said, let's get into the healthy habits. Okay, so the first thing that I started doing in 2020 is I wanted to track my water. Now, I honestly thought this was going to be really hard. I decided I want to drink a gallon of water a day. I watched a video of a gal that was doing it and I thought, oh, that would be a great habit I could start doing to just make sure I'm really mindful about getting my water in. And it turns out I am an excellent water drinker. Now, moderation with food, that's my struggle, but I am great at drinking water. And so I started doing a gallon a day. I'm going to show you guys the water bottle I'm using. It's so obnoxious. I kind of wish I would have gotten a half gallon. I'm not going to lie because it's it's very obnoxious when I go out in public with this giant water. But I love the visual aspect of it because I watch it as the day goes on. And sometimes I'll even pour it from the water bottle into a glass and drink it that way. So it's not so huge, but I am loving it. It's made it a lot easier for me to track the amount of water I'm drinking. And also if I have a lot of water left to drink, then I won't have a coffee or, you know, a soda or something like that because I know I have a lot more water to go. Okay. My second healthy habit that I've been doing is having two to three go-to breakfast and lunch options. I work from home a lot, but I am, you know, running around. So I try to have two or three go-to options for myself that when I'm purchasing groceries at the beginning of the week, I know what I need to buy to make these meals. So I know that they're always in stock. And then also it's great because I don't really have to think about what I'm going to have. So for breakfast, I'm typically doing a smoothie, eggs and Ezekiel English muffin, which I love the cinnamon raisin. I do not like the plain. It tastes like crap, but I love the cinnamon raisin. And then the third one is I'll do scrambled eggs and I'll do sausage. All of those are pretty low carb and they're good ingredients. And so that's been my go-to breakfast items and then for lunch I'm either doing a salad with some kind of protein whether it's protein I prep for the week of meals I'll usually steal some of that and make a salad the second option I have is like a little mini charcuterie board which I'll do some grass-fed beef uh, beef sticks I'll do like hard-boiled eggs I'll do a few nut thins and I can kind of graze over that and the third thing that I'm incorporating uh, for sometimes lunches is cauliflower crust pizza that's kind of a treat thing so I try not to do that more than once a week but it's something I look forward to and it takes the thought process out of what I'm gonna have for breakfast or lunch and so I'm more likely to pick a healthy choice so that's my second healthy option or second healthy habit. And then alongside that, this was actually going to be my sixth tip, but I'm going to go ahead and throw it in there now because it kind of goes with this is I have five healthy options to eat out. Now, I think this is really important because when we try to make new habits, we tend to think of all the things we need to eliminate, but we don't really make space in our lives for things that are going to happen. Like I still want to be able to meet my friends for lunch and I still want to go out to lunch with my husband and I still want to just, you know, go work outside the house and maybe edit all day. And I want to be able to go get something to eat. So I have five local places that I I tend to frequent of what I can order when I'm trying to eat healthy while I'm there. So that has been really helpful too, because I already know if someone says, where do you want to go to lunch? I have these options and I know what I'm going to order there. And that's just made it so much easier on myself. Okay. And the third thing along with food is meal prep, meal prep, meal prep, meal prep. If you're not meal prepping, what are you doing with your life? You're literally ruining your life if you're not meal prepping because you are putting yourself through torture daily on the daily of what to make for dinner. And that is like not living your best life. So if you haven't watched my video of the review of the cookbook, cook once, eat all week, watch it, get that cookbook. If that's not something you're into and you're not down for that, this is all you gotta do, ready? Easy peasy. You are going to prep, depending on the size of your family, three to five servings of one kind of meat, whether that's grass fed beef, whether if you're vegan, maybe that's tofu, maybe that's chicken, whatever it is, you're going to prep that much meat. You're going to prep a vegetable of some sort, whatever you want, broccoli, asparagus, whatever, whatever. And then you're going to do some kind of start. So whether it's potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, whatever, if you just do those three things, if you just prep those three categories, you will be surprised how you can MacGyver meals out of those things. Cause I will, when I make the meals for the week, I use that cookbook, but sometimes there's it's usually you're making three meals at once. Okay. In bulk. Right. But the thing about it is that when you make those three meals, there's always one meal that doesn't sound as great as the other two. So I'll either or double one of the other recipes or I'll prep those ingredients and make something totally different. So like this week I prepped a bunch of ground beef and the meals, none of the meals were tacos. Okay. But we had prepped ground beef and we have tortilla shells and we have always salsa and whatever. So using those items, I could MacGyver meal 
meals and I didn't have to think all the time or try to come up with new stuff every night because that's a nightmare. If you're not meal prepping, meal prep, it's going to save you so much time and it's going to help keep you on track and it's going to help your family because you're going to eat, you're not going to be eating out as much. So you're going to save money, which is always good. So lots of good things for meal prepping. Fourth thing on my list that I am doing more of in 2020 is reading. Now you can do this two ways. I like to have one physical book that I'm reading and it's usually kind of a little bit more. My physical book is usually more enjoyable because if the physical book isn't enjoyable, I'm literally going to get bored and stop reading it. And I love to read in our sauna and I can't take audiobooks in the sauna. So the physical book I'm reading right now that I'm getting ready to start is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. I'm so excited to read this. It's been out for a while. And then the book I just finished that I'm going to do a review on for you guys is Good Morning, Good Life by Amy Landino. She is a YouTuber. She's amazing. And so I just finished this book, but I'm doing a book a month in 2020 and I'm excited about it. So what I like to do is I like to take the days in the month, break them down and say, okay, I need to read this many pages a day. That works for me. It's totally up to you. The other thing that I love is I am doing audiobooks as well. So for me, I'm just saying one book a month, whether I'm finishing my audiobook or whether I'm, you know, doing a physical book. January, I read this. Right now I'm listening more than I'm reading. And then, so this will probably won't be done until March. However, it fits into your schedule. I love audiobooks, especially if I'm on a topic that I want to learn. So right now I'm listening to a book that's all about anxiety and depression and how to fight those things naturally. And so I like to put those on in the Air AirPods and listen while I'm cleaning or doing busy work. But then I also love to listen to them when I'm in the car. So it is easy to incorporate reading. If you're not a reader, try audiobooks. You will love it. And also pick a topic that you enjoy or that you really want to get better at or learn something. I feel like there's so much resources out there. If you are struggling with anxiety or you're struggling with time management or you're struggling with organization or your relationships, whatever it is, find a book, find it on audiobook, listen to it. It's going to give you great information and it's going to make you feel like your cup is being filled and we all could use a little bit of cup filling. So the next thing, number six, I don't know what number I'm on. I'm, I'm going to do 10. Okay. I'm going to do 10. I don't know what number this is. Okay. Get off my back about it. Give ourselves some grace. The next one on my list is find a workout you don't hate. I have an elliptical in my house. I know there are a lot of people that hate ellipticals and they hate cardio and they're like, if I had to do cardio, I would just go nuts. I like it, but it's not the greatest workout. Like it's not going to make me like shredded and I'm not going to lose a million pounds on the elliptical, but it is something I am moving my body. I am sweating and I'm getting a lot more mental health benefits from doing the elliptical every day. And then I probably am physical benefits. And then I'm also trying to incorporate other things. So today I'm actually going to go to a bar class. I'm going to meet one of my girlfriends there. I've never done it before. I was never a dancer. So it ought to be interesting. But also I'm meeting her there. So it seems kind of like more fun. I'm trying to incorporate some things like that where I'm maybe walking with a friend, but find activities that you actually enjoy doing. If you literally hate the type of workout that you're doing right now, quit, do something else because there's so many ways you can move your body and get a great workout. If you don't like it, you're not going to stick with it. It's going to be short term. So it just builds like anger and resentment in you. And you don't want that. All right. So the next thing on my list is journaling. Oh, journaling. Journaling is so underappreciated. And I know for some people are like journaling, who has time to journal? Literally you can journal for five to 10 minutes a day and it is a game changer. Look how funny this journal is that I'm on now. Smart ass, get it? Anyways, this is my new journal. I finished my other one. The reason I love journaling is because every morning I can sit for five to 10 minutes and I can just write. I can write whatever I'm feeling about. I can write whatever I'm worried about. Sometimes I'll write letters to myself in that journal. Sometimes I'll write letters to God in that journal. It just is a release for me. I can let it go. I can write it down and then I can let it go. And the other thing I love about it is I can go back and kind of study myself. I can see patterns that I'm doing, things that I'm self-sabotaging or also things with my mood. So I have learned through journaling and tracking and kind of studying me that there is, you know, a couple days in the month where I am feeling really low, really, really depressed, really down. Now that I know that that's kind of my pattern, I can try to schedule things that are maybe more fun and cup filling and do less taxing things during those times and give myself a little bit of grace. Also, just being mindful that, you know, I do tend to feel that way around this time helps me to be able to cope knowing that, hey, this is, you know, I might have a couple of down days, but it's short lived and I'm going to get through it. Journaling is such a powerful exercise for that. And so if you're struggling with being overwhelmed, busy, stressed, depressed, try journaling and you have to give it a good try. Like you can't do it for a week. You won't really, you might notice some benefits, but I finished a journal and I swear finishing that whole journal, I'm now at a place where I feel like it's so therapeutic for me because in the beginning, you're going to be like, I don't know what to write. I don't even want to be writing. Why am I writing? <laughs> and so that's okay. That's totally normal. Or it's going to be like a total bitch fest where you're just complaining the whole time. That's okay too. Whatever you need it to be, allow it to happen. And then organically, it's going to turn into a great tool for you. Also, if you need guidance, if you want to like more guided journal experience, there's a five minute journal. I'll leave link down below. And also the artist way is a book by Julia Cameron 
Cameron and it's a great book about unleashing the creative side of you and she talks about morning pages where she does three pages which is just like a, you know just write whatever you're thinking and so that's kind of how I got into it those are both great resources if you want a more guided experience okay so the next thing on my healthy habit is to be growing my mind so I am actually starting a, a new business in 2020 and so I'm I'm definitely doing a lot of education for that but also like I said before when with the reading piece is there are parts of my life that I would like to improve whether it's you know learning a new language I would love to learn to speak Spanish whether it's about organization obviously I love organizing I have a whole series on this channel about it and so whatever aspect of your life that you're looking to improve or you're just in generally interested in check out some learning platforms YouTube is a great learning platform that's why I am on YouTube is because it for me was such a great outlet of positivity and growth that I just wanted to pass that along I want to share everything that I know and that's working for me onto you which is why I started this channel there's another great tool called Skillshare and I'll leave it linked down below this video is not sponsored although I'd like it to be so Skillshare if you're watching hey, hey. and what it is it's a hundred dollars a year you can learn about everything you can learn about photography you can learn about drawing you can learn about video editing whatever you want you can learn on this site and it's very inexpensive it's a great gift idea check out Skillshare also another thing is to research so if you're trying to learn and grow like let's say you've been newly diagnosed with something like maybe you have irritable bowel syndrome or you've been newly diagnosed with depression I strongly strongly suggest that you do your research before you're putting something in your body that you don't completely understand now if you're deciding to take something that is a hundred percent up to you but I also think it's up to you to do your research and figure out you know more information about what's going on with your body so that you can best set yourself up for success because obviously we want you to be healthy and happy and I want that for you but it also is our responsibility to go out and seek out that information from a good source that isn't just trying to sell us something the next thing I am doing on 2020 that in 2020 that I'm really loving is my Fitbit I showed you this in a haul and I was a hairdresser for a long time so I never really sat for work well now I am doing a lot more office stuff and so I'm sitting so I love this because it makes me get up counts my steps and I'm kind of a competitive person so if it tells me like I need to hit 10,000 I'm like I will hit 10,000 so I love it for that but the other thing I love about it is it tracks my sleep so I can kind of see how I'm sleeping and how I can you know better adjust maybe my room if I need to or my schedule so that I can get more sleep and then the other thing I love about it is it runs my text messages through I am easily distracted by social media and email so I like to tuck my phone away but I do have four step bonus children and I also have a husband and I'm self-employed so sometimes I need to see text messages that are coming through maybe someone is sick at school or they're someone's car is broken down I need to be available you know anytime I love this because when I'm sleeping, if the kids are downstairs and they're like, hey, I'm sick today, whatever, it will run through and vibrate on my arm. I'm not seeing emails from Poshmark. I'm just seeing my kids. I love it, love it, love it for that. It's allowed me to disconnect a little bit more while still being available for emergencies. Okay, and the last thing on my list is my stand-up desk. Right now I'm standing up at my stand-up desk and I'm leaning in still. So I love this. I love this because they say that sitting is like the new smoking because we're sitting and we're too sedentary. So when my little Fitbit goes off and says I need to do stuff, I know I'm I'm easily distracted and so if I get up and like just start walking I'm gonna be like oh let's do the laundry oh let's make dinner oh let's whatever and not finish my work so now I just when this thing goes off I push my chair to the side pop my little stand-up desk off I go so those are my 10 habits that I'm actually doing in 2020 I'm actually loving and they were really easy to implement so if I hope that you found this video helpful and if you are gonna try one of these tips please leave a comment below and let me know which one you are going to try I would love to follow along on your journey as well also if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up it lets me know the type of content that you like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I am my goal is to gain some subscribers this year I would love to hit a thousand subscribers before summer so if you like this video please consider sharing it with your friends or any anyone that you think could benefit from the content on this channel I would love to help as many people as possible thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye